There's no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Before we get too far into the video, I'd just like to say that this video is sponsored by Masso CNC controllers. A little bit of background. I've been looking for a, a light industrial sewing machine for a little while and I come across this one in the local classifieds. I didn't pay a lot for it. It wasn't working. Um, I really believe that uh, things like these classical old machines, if they can be repaired, they should be repaired. And they're getting harder to find parts, but uh, I really love the engineering in these machines. And uh, this is not a full restoration. This is just a project where I wanted to get the machine going again and do some uh, learning and practice on the in terms of sewing. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you. So here's my little FAF 230 sewing machine. And I got this uh, a few weeks ago, but when I got it, it didn't have the timing belt just in here. And that snapped by the previous owner or whatever. No, a number of other things too was uh, it was all gummed up with old oil and dust and cotton and stuff like that. So a number of parts were uh, seized. So I've been soaking this in kerosene and putting oil on it to try and free up some of the mechanisms inside. And one of the mechanisms inside that uh, that was completely frozen was the bobbin itself. Couldn't turn at all. So I'll just show you that. So that mechanism right there was completely jammed. Uh, now it seems to be freed up. I, I did soak it a lot in oil um, and I, I didn't force anything. I just kept soaking it and kept trying to turn the shaft through here until it came free. Uh, a number of other mechanisms that were frozen, completely frozen, were these adjustment linkages. Um, this one in particular, this one here, undid the, the bolts and pulled them out and, uh, and cleaned them up, put, put some oil on it and away it went. This one was completely frozen as well. This is this drops the um, what's that do? Drops the uh, the dogs, I think they're called. Um, but what I want to try and do really is put this timing belt on uh, first to see what I need to do with the rest of the machine. Because at this stage, I don't know how well it works or doesn't work. Sorry, the other thing that was completely well. It would go into forward, so there's forward, but uh, it would not go into reverse. And still, I don't think I've got all the travel on reverse. So um, I'm still trying to work out how much um, travel I can get. I've been tapping it gently, but I, uh, and putting lubricant inside on, the, there's like a fork inside there that goes on a cam. Um, I need to uh, see if I can clean that up a bit more. I will probably be taking the shaft out, so gaining access to the mechanisms inside to see if I can free up this uh, forward reverse mechanism. I really don't want to force anything and snap it because if that's if, it, if I do break something, it's probably game over. These days with digital cameras, before I take anything apart, I take photos of, of the assembly of everything. So at least I've got some a fighting chance. Uh, the manuals for these old machines are pretty hard to come by, but uh, let me just take some photos of this top here and I'll pull it apart. So here's the timing belt by the way, I had to get this from the UK, I tried to find one in Australia but uh, I had no luck at all. I'm just trying to get a little peek and what's under here, underneath there, so, so when I pull it off, I don't miss something. Okay, so those levers at the back are connected. So those springs are off now, and up and away. So now we get to have a look inside this uh, the innards of this beast and uh, it's been around since 1957 so you can expect years and years worth of crap in there. 
those who know about these machines are probably laughing at me right now but what I'm trying to find is a timing mark on that cog um, some sort of mark that I can reinstall everything when I pull it out to exactly the same if I can't find one I'm going to have to make my own so it all goes back together same as, I, as it came apart next part is to drive this little roll pin through here to try and lever this off I think I just tore a tit muscle. Tit cramp. Oh. Can you believe it? Oh, ski. I cannot get that bushing out and I'm tapping it on the side and I don't want to damage it anymore. So I'm going to pull the shaft this way. That means I've got to pull all this mechanism out at the front and in the middle. That's what I didn't want to do, but I uh, may not have any choice. Car timing belt's got nothing on a sewing machine. Nothing. Where's my damn rag? <laughs> Easier flip and overhaul and a 747 engine than this thing. Now I just got to put it back together. Yeah. Think. I think. I think it might have. I've got a gun, but it's really stiff.
<laughs> Motor's very gutless though. So it turns out these contacts are really grubby. They were grubby. I've cleaned them up and that's now improved the motor performance out of sight. This thing is all threaded up now. I think. <laughs> I think it's all threaded up. So I'm going to try and sew for the first time. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. jammed and the reason why it's jamming is right there I'm going to try and work out why that is okay this is attempt about four or five or something like that now let me just increase the stitch length here I had some trouble setting up the bobbin and uh, how to set up the bobbin I have no idea but I've passed a few hand threads. Very tight stitches there. <laughs> I lost a thread. Oh gosh. What's happened there? I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Bit of adjustment here and there. Yes, 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 yes. That's in reverse. I don't want reverse. Oh, my thread just snapped again. Why? Thing down. So. What happened there? Well, the machine's working now. Um, I've had to do a fair bit of tuning with it. Um, I've had to sort of learn about how the me mechanisms work and that's really why um, I like doing up these old machines. This, this thing is all, it's gears and shafts and um, it's all mechanical. It doesn't have a computer or a system you know, it's different. It's 1957 technology. They sure knew how to make quality uh, equipment back in those days. You know, the old, uh, this is all cast, it's all heavy. Um, goodness me. Sure, it needs, it, it isn't painted, it, it is um, a bit rough looking, but I really want to keep it how it is for the moment. I want to learn how to use the machine. I want to make some bits and pieces with it. Um, so we'll leave it how, how it is for the time being. and, and um, it's all it's functional I've tested it out and, and I may need to do some other adjustments and maybe in time I'll, I'll do a, a full restoration and clean it up and and paint it up and put some new stickers on it if you can even do that uh, I've really learned a lot with this this thing here it probably would have been um, I didn't spend a lot of money I just bought a belt and I, I bought some bobbins for it cleaned up the bobbin case lubricated it cleaned all the grunge out of it it's been Goodness me, this has probably made all the old wedding dresses and school uniforms in its day when people used to do that instead of buying it, had to go out and make their, uh, their own things, dresses and formal wear and stuff like that. So um, it's a fabulous machine, so respect, respect. I'm going to make a, uh, a tool roll now, see, uh, see what I can do, see what I can do. Bear with me. So I just threw down a few stitches there, just uh, showing me this. I've got a lot to learn, and that's why I do it. It's fun to learn.